my name is Saba and I'm an instructor here at Museo Art Academy. A little bit about my education. I completed my bachelor's in arts and majored in psychology from India. And I moved to America about five years ago. I'm a freelance artist and I mostly do acrylic and oil paintings, landscapes as well as portraits. I also explore other materials such as painting on rocks, on shoes, on t-shirts, on pencil pouches, sometimes even a closet door. Today I'll be demonstrating um, color theory. I thought this would be a useful topic since it applies to traditional as well as digital art. So let's get right into it. So over here I have a little bit of work already done. I thought I would do some of it and I would demonstrate the rest of it to you. So color theory is nothing but looking at different combinations that are appealing um, visually. So over here, I have done a color wheel for you in my acrylic paint because that is my go-to medium. Um, I also have a, a brush right here. We will talk about the anatomy of the brush in just a bit. So before I do that, let's talk about color theory. What are some different types of color schemes that we can do? So color wheel comprises of primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. What are primary colors? Primary colors are yellow, red, and blue. They are primary because they cannot be made. And then we have colors that come out of our primary colors. Like if I mix my yellow and my red, I get orange. If I mix my red and my blue, I get my violet or my purple. If I mix my blue and my yellow, I get my green. And those green, orange, and violet are our secondary colors. Now we have primary and secondary colors. But what are tertiary colors? Tertiary colors are something that comes out of mixing secondary colors and primary colors together. So if I mix my green and my yellow, I get my lime green. If I mix my green and my blue, I get my teal. If I mix my blue and my violet, I get my blue violet. Similarly, if I mix my violet and my red, I get my red violet, so on and so forth. When you divide your color wheel into an equal half, you get what is called warm colors and cool colors. So warm colors are all the reds, oranges, and the yellows. And then cool colors are the greens, blues, and our magentas and violets. When you use um, one of the warm colors, such as yellow, and then go to the opposite side and use the color that is across from yellow, that creates a very, very high contrast. And that is a complementary color. Yellow and violet complement each other. And that gives us a very um, striking contrast. But if I were to use yellow and yellow orange, that will give us a low contrast because they're very similar to each other. And those colors would be called the analogous colors, colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. We also have triadic colors, colors that um, form a triangle on the color wheel, such as yellow, red, and blue. So I have some colors put out over here for us, and I'm going to demonstrate um, a complementary color combination, um, some analogous colors, and then a triadic color scheme. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of green. I like to use a rounded brush. This is a rounded brush. I like to use it because it is very, very versatile. I can use the very tip of the brush for 
um, very small areas, but also use the belly of the brush to actually do the wider areas. The tip is exactly what I, um, what you think it is. It is the very, very tip of the brush. Um, but if you go further down, that gives you the wider area and that is the belly of the brush. Similarly, if you come down to the metal portion of the brush, the very, very uh, beginning of the metal area is the heel of the brush. As you come to the middle, that gives us the ferrule, and then the very end of the metal portion is the crimp. And lastly, the wooden portion of your brush is called the handle. Okay, so I think our green has dried now. Another thing about acrylics is that the colors dry very, very fast. So you have to work fairly quickly with them. Okay, I think my green is done. So I'm gonna clean my brush. I'm just gonna swirl it in my water. Get rid of any excess on the rim. And if this was the end of my project, I would just set it on my um, jar or I would lay it flat on my towel. But right now I still have work to do. So I'm just gonna gently dab it and get rid of the water. And I'm gonna pick up some red. Oops. Pick up some red. some Christmas colors there. So you can notice how when I pick up my paint, I'm not picking a lot. I pick up very little. Similarly, when you put out paint from your tubes, make sure you're putting out only a little bit because a little bit goes a long way also, if you ever need more paint, you can always squeeze out more, but you can't put your paint back, especially if you have tubes. All right, so that, my friends, is our complementary colors. Green, and we have red across from green, so that gives us red and green being the complementary colors. Let's try an analogous color scheme. Swirl, swirl. Get rid of the excess on the rim. Have them dry. I never want to stab my brush down. That's just going to destroy our brush. I only do it from the sides. Okay, so I'm thinking we can do yellow, yellow, orange, and orange. Or we could do red, orange, and yellow. All right, let's do red, orange, and yellow. Let's start with our red. These are my favorite colors. If you ask my students, I always demonstrate using the warm colors. They're just my go-tos. It's just so warm and pleasing to the eye. All right, that's my red. going to pick up a little bit of my orange. And if you ever feel like, but I don't have orange, that's fine. You have red and yellow. Just mix a little bit of red and yellow, you get your orange. All you need is a set of primary colors. All right, 
there we have our orange. And now, lastly, I'm going to do my yellow. I'm not going to clean my brush. I'm just going to go in. Sometimes if I'm going to use a color that is very close to the color before, I don't, um, I don't wash my brush. It also helps me with the blending. All right, so we have some analogous colors right here. And now I'm going to demonstrate the triadic colors. So let's start with our, I guess I was gonna use yellow. So start with our yellow. Do red. Okay. And then my last color is going to be blue. This will be the perfect time to show you how to squeeze out your paint. I'm not gonna squeeze out a lot of it because I know I'm only gonna use it for this small tiny little triangle right here. So barely need any. So very gentle. Squeeze. All right, that should be good enough. You would notice that sometimes if you don't wipe down your brush after cleaning your brushes, you're going to find your colors becoming very, very translucent. And you don't want that. Right. So there you have it. You have your complementary colors, you have your analogous colors, and then your triadic colors. Brush and set them down. Let's try. Now I have some examples that I would like to share with you guys um, that I've done in my classes in the past. Here's an example of uh, analogous colors that we used in my general art class. Here's another example of other general art class um, project that we did using analogous colors um, for the animal as well as the background. We went for reds, um, violets, and blues for the animal, and then went for yellow, orange, yellow, and then lime green for the background. Similarly, uh, I also have another project that we did with my drawing class, and we incorporated warm colors as well as cool colors. And lastly, there's an example of a project that I did with my painting class and with my teams and we incorporated complementary colors, and I did yellows and violets or purples. This is acrylics. Okay. So that was it for the demonstration part. Um, once again, my name is Ms. Saba, and I teach a lot of classes at Museo not just drawing, but I also do painting. I teach manga. I teach drawing all age groups from five to teens. 
And lastly, I also teach digital illustration. So yeah, this was fun. And I hope to see you in my classes soon. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.